I smoothed out the wrinkles on my silk evening gown and took a deep breath. Tonight's celebration dinner at the country club was supposed to be a happy occasion, marking my husband Robert's retirement after decades of leading Rena Enterprises. Little did I know it would become the stage for one of the most shocking betrayals of my life. As we clinked champagne glasses with the board members and their spouses, Robert cleared his throat. I have an announcement to make, he declared, his eyes flickering towards a young woman at the other end of the table. My heart sank as I recognized Helen Hadsell, one of the junior marketing executives. The way Robert looked at her made my stomach churn. Amy and I have decided to get divorced, Robert continued, his voice steady. I've fallen in love with someone else, and we plan to marry soon. A hush fell over the table as gasps and murmurs erupted. I felt all eyes on me, waiting for my reaction. Tears stung my eyes, but I refused to let them fall. You coward, I spat at Robert, my voice trembling with fury. How dare you blindside me like this? I'm sorry, Amy, he said, not sounding sorry at all, but I've made up my mind. Helen understands me in a way you never could. Helen shifted uncomfortably, her cheeks flushed. I shot her a withering glare, wondering how this naive girl could be so foolish. As the dinner descended into chaos, I excused myself, desperate for air. Out on the terrace, I leaned against the railing, trying to steady my breathing. Anger and humiliation washed over me in waves. Robert had been my whole world for over 31 years. We'd built Reina Enterprises together from the ground up, sacrificing countless nights and weekends. And this was how he repaid me by casting me aside for someone half my age. I wiped away a tear, my jaw set with determination. If Robert thought I would go down without a fight, he was wrong. Game on, I thought. The gloves were coming off. That night, I couldn't sleep, replaying Robert's betrayal over and over in my mind. How could the man I'd loved and supported for decades do this to me and our family? As the first rays of dawn peeked through the curtains, I knew I couldn't stay in misery any longer. If Robert wanted a fight, then a fight he would get. I marched into the bathroom and looked at myself in the mirror. My eyes were puffy from crying but my resolve had never been stronger. I was Amy Reyna, and I would not be the victim here. First order of business was hiring a tough divorce attorney. I had my secretary set up meetings with the city's most ruthless lawyers. Within hours, I was sitting across from Julie Bowen, a fierce litigator known for taking down cheating husbands. I want to bleed him dry, I said bluntly as Julie looked through my financial documents. She raised an eyebrow. Even with your substantial assets, a nasty divorce could deplete your net worth considerably. Money is no object, I said through gritted teeth. That lying snake is going to pay for what he did to me and my family's legacy. A sleigh smile spread across Julie's face. Then let's make sure we take him for everything he's worth. Over the next few weeks, I followed Julie's advice to the letter using every resource at my disposal. Quiet instructions were given to the Reyna Enterprises Accounting Department for a full forensic audit under the guise of routine checks. Every bank statement, every money transfer I wanted them examined closely. Julie also coached me on planting seeds of doubt among the board members, suggesting personal concerns over Robert's ability to properly lead the company given his emotional state. A few whispered comments here, a worried look there, and suddenly the company I had helped build was questioning my husband's leadership. All the while, Robert walked around in a love-struck daze, oblivious to the trap I was setting around him. He thought I would simply walk away. I would be content with whatever crumbs he decided to toss my way in the divorce. The poor fool had no idea what kind of trouble was coming. The forensic audit quickly revealed a web of shady dealings connected to Robert's desperation to impress his young mistress. Inflated expense reports, kickbacks from vendors, even outright theft. He had put Reyna Enterprises' financial health at risk to fund his lavish courtship of Helen. I pored over the damning documents late into the night, 
my anger growing with each uncovered wrongdoing. This was the true depth of Robert's deceit. He was willing to sacrifice our life's work, the company we built from nothing, all for a fling with a girl young enough to be his daughter. The next morning, I hand-delivered the audit findings to the board, making sure to highlight the most serious violations with pointed commentary. Clearly, Robert's judgment has been clouded by his personal indiscretions. I stated, careful to keep my tone measured despite the storm raging inside me. I shudder to think how much further this rot might have spread if left unchecked. One by one, I watched the concern edge itself onto the board members' faces. Even Robert's most ardent supporters couldn't deny the evidence of his mismanagement and potential criminal activity. Robert, for his part, seemed stunned by my revelations. The fool actually had the audacity to pull me aside and try to plead ignorance. Amy, you have to believe me. I never meant for things to go this far, he blubbered. I've made some mistakes, sure, but it was all for love. I recoiled from his clammy grasp, disgust written plainly across my face. For love? You jeopardized everything we built together for some cheap fling. I don't even recognize you anymore. As if summoned, Helen appeared in the doorway, her heavy makeup unable to hide her fragility. Robert's eyes immediately locked onto her, his entire stance changing as if their bond transcended the tawdry reality. Don't worry, my dear, he cooed. Once the old ball of chain is out of the way, nothing will keep us apart. The naked cruelty in his voice awakened an icy clarity in me. Forget taking him for everything he was worth this man deserved to lose it all. I crossed the room and stood squarely between Robert and his prize. Let me make one thing clear to both of you. I am not going anywhere. This company was my life long before you came along, Helen, and I'll be damned if I let you ruin it. I won't let either of you destroy it with your recklessness. Helen opened her mouth, her panicked eyes flicking to Robert for support but I cut her off with a sharp gesture. As for you, I turned my withering gaze onto my soon-to-be ex-husband. I did not survive decades of your insufferable ego just to be discarded in your twilight years. You want to play in the mud with this girl, be my guest, but I guarantee the only thing waiting for you is regret. Turning on my heel, I left them gaping in my wake, already planning my next move. Let them have their fantasy for now their world was about to come crashing down. With the audit findings exposing Robert's misdeeds, I knew I had all the leverage for ensuring a favorable divorce settlement. Still, I intended to twist the knife further before going in for the kill. I requested an emergency meeting with Robert, putting on my best act of contriteness when he arrived. I've had some time to reflect on things. I began, wringing my hands for effect, and I realize now how terribly I've behaved. Robert's eyes widened in surprise, and I fought back the urge to sneer at his gullibility. Really? You're finally coming around. I was just so hurt and angry. I continued, letting my voice quaver with manufactured regret. But I see now that I can't force you to love me. You found happiness with Helen and it's not my place to stand in the way of true love. The smug satisfaction oozing from his expression was almost too much to bear. Well, I'm glad you've come to your senses. This has been difficult enough without your vindictiveness making things worse. I reached across the table and grasped his hand, putting on my best pleading expression. I only want what's best for you, Robert, which is why you have to end this affair immediately. His brow furrowed in confusion. What? Why would I do that? Leaning in, I lowered my voice conspiratorially. Because I'm afraid Helen has been using you this whole time, taking advantage of your generous nature for her own gain. Robert opened his mouth to protest, but I barreled on with my carefully constructed story. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I've discovered evidence that she's been having other affairs. Multiple affairs, Robert. She's been bleeding you dry to fund her indiscretions behind your back. His face cycled through a range of emotions. Anger, hurt, disbelief. No, Helen would never. We love each other. 
Putting on my most sorrowful expression, I gave his hand a pat. I'm so sorry, but it's true. The bank records, the money transfers, it's all there in black and white. She's been making a fool of you. Robert's shoulders slumped in defeat for just an instant. I felt a pang of something pity, perhaps, but it quickly passed as I remembered all the pain he had caused me. If it's any consolation, this newfound wisdom has made me realize how deeply I've misjudged you over the years, I lied. Why, if I had a partner who showed half the care and dedication you've displayed, I would consider myself the luckiest woman alive. That seemed to lift Robert's spirits a bit, and he mumbled a thank you. Men were so easy to manipulate when you knew how to handle their fragile egos. As he walked out, I allowed myself a satisfied smile. Between the financial void awaiting him and the carefully planted seeds of doubt about Helen's loyalty, Robert's world was crumbling. Just a few more pushes, and his whole pathetic facade would collapse. With Robert reeling from my revelations about Helen's supposed cheating, it was time for the final blow. I called an emergency board meeting, putting on my most serious face as the members arrived. I'm afraid I have some deeply troubling news regarding Robert's conduct as CEO. I began once everyone was seated. It pains me to have to do this, but the evidence leaves me no choice. I nodded to my assistant, who handed out the audit findings. The room was filled with gasps and murmurs as the board members read about the extent of the embezzlement and misappropriation. As you can see, Robert has been systematically looting the company's funds to support an unacceptable personal relationship. I declared, letting the accusation hang in the air. His judgment has been hopelessly compromised to a degree that constitutes gross neglect of his duties. Johnny Depp, a senior board member known for his strong ethics, set down the report with a look of profound disappointment. I had my suspicions given the rumors, but I never imagined the depths of Robert's betrayal. This is a gut punch. Believe me, Johnny, I understand your pain all too well, I replied, putting on my most mournful expression. Which is why, as difficult as it is, I feel we have no choice but to relieve Robert of his duties effective immediately. A chorus of solemn nods rippled through the room. Even those usually loyal to Robert couldn't ignore his huge mistakes. Gritting my teeth, I forced out my next words. It truly breaks my heart to say this, but Robert's personal actions appear to have sent him into an emotional tailspin, calling into question his ability to lead this company. For the good of Reina Enterprises and our employees, we must act now. I recommend an indefinite leave of absence on medical grounds while he seeks treatment. The board members' reactions told me they had taken the bait. By presenting Robert's departure as a compassionate intervention rather than a straight termination, I had given them all plausible deniability, allowing them to avoid feeling complicit in his downfall. As the meeting adjourned with the board's full endorsement, I allowed myself a small, satisfied smile. Everything was falling into place perfectly. The forensic audit, the sowing of doubts, and now this final move. A part of me felt a flicker of sadness at how far my beloved husband had fallen, but he had chosen to throw away the life we built together through his arrogance and weakness. I merely ensured he suffered the full consequences. My reflection was interrupted by the ping of a new email from Julie, my attorney. Pulling up the message, I scanned her concise update and felt a rush of vicious satisfaction. Transfer of assets proceeding as planned. The financial guillotine is primed, just say the word. I typed a simple reply. Do it. Let the delicious ruination begin. The dominoes began falling into place with ruthless precision. Within days of being forced into a leave of absence, Robert found himself systematically frozen out of Reina Enterprises operations. Emails went unanswered, meetings were rescheduled, and he was essentially a ghost at the company he once ruled over. I could only imagine the sinking feeling in his gut as the power he had taken for granted for decades slipped through his fingers. Still, I knew the worst was yet to come for the arrogant fool. 
Miss Reyna, you have a visitor. My assistant's voice crackled over the intercom. Helen Hadsell is asking to see you. A cruel smile tugged at my lips as I'd buzzed her in. The girl's arrival was right on schedule. Helen entered looking every bit the rabbit caught in the headlights. Though she tried valiantly to maintain her polished composure, I could see the cracks beneath the surface. What can I do for you, dear? I asked in my most saccharine tone as she took a seat. I trust this isn't about your extracurricular activities with Robert. I would simply hate for word of that unpleasantness to spread further. Her eyes went wide with panic. I, what are you talking about? Oh, I'm sure it's nothing. I waved a perfectly manicured hand in fake nonchalance. Just that it would be an awful shame if those private investigator reports detailing your numerous other affairs ended up going public. Can you imagine the scandal? Helen paled, and I fought back the urge to laugh at her obvious distress. The phony dossier had worked perfectly. The fake reports I had made were truly works of art. But that's not true, she sputtered. Robert and I, we love each other. It's just us. If you say so, dear, I replied coolly. Though if I were you, I might be more concerned with his mounting legal troubles and the likelihood of financial ruin that caught her attention as I had intended. Leaning forward, I laid it all out for her in brutal clarity. The fraud charges looming over Robert, the asset freezes, and the inevitable collapse of his net worth once the divorce was finalized. Do you honestly think a man facing prison time and bankruptcy will have any qualms about leaving you high and dry? I asked with mock sympathy. Or that you'll still hold any appeal to him once the thrill of your tawdry affair fades? Helen's face crumpled as the truth sank in. She was nothing more than a disposable plaything to Robert, shiny arm candy to be cast aside when she was no longer convenient. You're lying, she whispered, but it was clear she didn't believe her own words. Smiling thinly, I pushed the killing blow. If I were you, I'd get out while you still can. Cut your losses and find yourself a new mark to leech off. There are plenty of rich, desperate fools out there to exploit. A single tear rolled down Helen's cheek as she stared at me stunned. I gave her a few moments to absorb the reality crashing down around her before delivering the final twist of the knife. Oh, and one more thing. Before you go running back to that pathetic man you've been with, I added with sugary venom, I'd strongly advise emptying out any of Robert's personal accounts or assets you have access to. You'll need whatever you can get to restart your entrepreneurial activities. For just an instant, Helen's mask slipped, and I saw the ruthless mercenary underneath. That was all the confirmation I needed that my carefully planted mole had succeeded in guiding her toward the path of maximum damage. Nodding to herself, Helen stood and wiped away the crocodile tears before squaring her shoulders in false bravado. You're going to regret this, she spat out in a trembling voice, utterly devoid of conviction. I simply laughed as she turned on her heel and stormed out. The delusional girl had no idea how correct she was, but not for the reason she thought. Once this was all over, the only regret would be Robert's. The only regret I had was not destroying them sooner. The end game was finally upon us. Within weeks of Helen's hasty exit, the other shoe dropped with a thud that shook Robert to his core. I took great pleasure in being there as the investigator from our corporate security team laid out the damning evidence. Bank statements, wire transfers, photos, an entire dossier showing how Helen had systematically looted over seven figures from Robert's personal accounts and investments. She, she couldn't have, Robert stammered, his face pale with disbelief. We were going to start a life together. The investigator simply shrugged, his expression neutral. I'm afraid the money trail doesn't lie, Mr. Reyna. This appears to have been a long-running scheme to bleed you dry. Robert's eyes found mine, pleading for help. Amy, you have to believe me. I never thought she was capable of something like this. I crossed my arms and looked at him with disdain. Really, Robert? 
because it seems to me that poor judgment and self-delusion have become something of a pattern for you lately. His shoulders sagged under the weight of his situation. It would have been almost pitiable if he weren't such a despicable creature. But I don't understand why. Why would she do this to me after everything I sacrificed? He choked out. I allowed myself a feral smile. Isn't it obvious? You were nothing more than a means to an end a vain gullible fool right for the fleecing by someone younger and prettier who knew just which strings to pull. Robert opened his mouth to defend Helen, but I silenced him with a raised hand. Save your breath and what little dignity you have left. This is just the beginning. The avalanche is coming, and you're going to lose everything. Over the next several days, the full scope of Robert's downfall became clear. Financial penalties and legal fees piled up, draining his assets. Forensic auditors found more dubious transactions and potential tax avoidance schemes, bringing the wrath of the IRS. Meanwhile, the revelations of corporate misconduct I had carefully stoked stripped Robert of every remaining board seat and title. He went from leading a billion-dollar empire to being a shunned pariah in a month, his legacy crumbling to dust. The final blow, however, came from an unexpected direction. The gossip columns and society pages that once praised his storybook marriage to me now turned against him. With the collapse of his non-disclosure agreement as part of the divorce proceedings, the media had a field day exposing his scandalous downfall. I carefully fed tantalizing bits about his affair and wild spending to key media contacts. Soon, stories of poor, used Robert and his gold-digging mistress were splashed across the tabloids in juicy detail. The scandal was too irresistible to ignore, no matter how much money was spent trying to cover it up. In one final insult, Robert's beloved country club terminated his membership in a cloud of humiliation. The old guard closed ranks around him, making him a cautionary tale, whispered about over drinks. When Robert inevitably crawled back to me, begging for a chance to restore some fragment of his former life, I denied him with cold finality. This is the bed you made for yourself, Robert, I said, unmoved by his pleas. I suggest you learn to sleep in it. As he slumped away, broken and discarded, I felt a new sensation blossom within me not quite happiness, but a sense of resolution. This chapter of betrayal and trauma was finally closed, allowing me to focus on the future. The battles had been harsh but necessary to ensure my complete independence. Never again would I allow anyone to compromise the destiny I had fought so hard for. I was Amy Reina, newly in control of my own fate and the world had better be ready for my brand of leadership. As the dust settled from the battlefield of my divorce, I wasted no time in firmly establishing my authority over Reina Enterprises. The board meetings that had once been mere formalities were now arenas where I wielded my hard-earned power. Profitability is down over 14% compared to last quarter's projections, I stated firmly, staring down the assembled executives. I want to know why, and I want solutions on my desk within 50 hours. There was a momentary silence as the senior leadership team avoided eye contact, each hoping someone else would speak first. Finally, Daniel, the CFO who had been Robert's loyal supporter for years, cleared his throat. The shortfalls can likely be attributed to the recent transition and its disruptions. He began carefully, not to mention the lingering PR headaches from you know. My eyes narrowed dangerously. You mean the scandal my husband created with his reckless behavior? The one that jeopardized this entire company's future. Daniel visibly shrank back, his face flushing. Well, I didn't mean to imply. Save it, I cut him off, leaving no room for excuses. I cut him off with a withering glare. I don't want to hear any more excuses about things beyond our control. We make our own destiny here, and anyone unable to adapt to my leadership should explore other opportunities. The room went silent, the temperature seeming to drop as the executives realized the new power dynamics. This was no longer the Reina Enterprises of old, 
where decisions were debated endlessly behind closed doors. There would be no more nods to consensus or democratic hand-wringing. My decisions would be final. Mrs. Reina, Melissa, the head of operations, ventured after clearing her throat. If I may be so bold, your decisive vision is a marked change from how we've traditionally operated. I think I speak for everyone when I say an adjustment period will be required before we can realign strategy. A few cautious nods rippled through the table, though most seemed to sense the defiance in Melissa's words. My jaw clenched hard enough to crack walnuts. Slowly rising to my feet, I fixed Melissa with a look that could blister paint. Let me make one thing clear for you and your colleagues, I said, my voice like razors scraping steel. I did not survive decades of being gaslit and undermined by that spineless husband of mine, only to face further diminishment from his lackeys. Melissa shrank back in her seat, all bravado evaporating as I walked around the table toward her. I could sense the others watching with a mix of disbelief and morbid fascination. None dared to intervene as the new order asserted itself. This company's old ways are over, I stated, leaning in until Melissa was forced to maintain eye contact. Either adjust to my leadership and start pulling your weight, or I'll find those better suited to my vision. Am I making myself clear? She nodded almost imperceptibly, seeming to have momentarily forgotten how to speak. Straightening up, I turned my gaze to encompass the entire room. I did not fight my way through the depths of hell just to be undermined again. Reina Enterprises answers to me now, and me alone. If that reality is too difficult for any of you to accept, I'd be more than happy to expedite your transition into unemployment. The silence that followed spoke volumes. The machine had a new master, and woe to anyone foolish enough to forget that. As the meeting disbanded, the message was clear, a new era had begun. I allowed myself a tight predatory smile. This was just the beginning, the first step in reshaping this company in my image. Robert's lack of strength and resolve in his final years, spent chasing youthful indulgences, had led us here. Perhaps if he had shown even a fraction of my determination, this harsh transition could have been avoided. But his failures became my greatest advantage, the forge where my fierce independence was created. I emerged strong, unbreakable, and finally in complete control of my destiny. As I stood in the boardroom, the echoes of my words still hanging in the air, I knew I had just taken the first of many steps to secure my position. Robert's downfall was more than a personal victory. It was a lesson in the ruthlessness required to survive and thrive in a world that had often tried to undermine me. For years, I had been the supportive wife, the silent partner, the one who held everything together while Robert frittered away our success. But those days were over. My transformation was not sudden but forged through countless battles and betrayals. Each lie, each act of deceit, had hardened me, shaping me into the formidable leader I had become. Robert's reckless pursuit of pleasure and his subsequent downfall had provided the perfect opportunity to demonstrate my resolve. His weakness was the crucible that had tested and strengthened me, and now I stood unchallenged, ready to lead Reina Enterprises into a new era. From this day forward, I would ensure that my name, Amy Reina, was synonymous with strength, perseverance, and unrelenting ambition. I had not fought my way through betrayal and heartache to let anyone or anything stand in my way now. Every decision I made would reflect my vision and my commitment to transforming this company into a powerhouse. There would be no more room for complacency or weakness. Those who could not keep up would be left behind. In the weeks that followed, I implemented changes that shook the very foundations of Reina Enterprises. The old guard, loyal to Robert's way of doing things, quickly realized that their time was over. I demanded excellence and efficiency, rewarding those who adapted and excelling, while showing no mercy to those who resisted. The transition was not without its challenges, but I met each one head-on, never wavering in my determination. 
I reached out to new partners, forged new alliances, and introduced innovative strategies that revitalized the company's operations. Every move was calculated, every step deliberates, as I worked to erase the shadow of Robert's mismanagement and establish a legacy of my own. The media, once fixated on the scandal of my marriage's collapse, began to shift their focus to the remarkable turnaround happening at Reina Enterprises. Headlines that once spoke of betrayal and deceit now highlighted my strategic brilliance and unyielding leadership. In the end, Robert's downfall was more than just a personal victory. It was a testament to my strength and vision. It proved that I was more than capable of not only surviving but thriving in the face of adversity. I had taken control of my destiny, and there was no turning back. The world would soon understand that Amy Reyna was a force to be reckoned with, a leader who had emerged from the flames of betrayal stronger and more determined than ever. I stood tall, knowing that this was just the beginning. The road ahead was long, but I was ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. With every decision, every action, I would cement my place as the rightful leader of Reina Enterprises. The company was now a reflection of my strength and ambition, and I would ensure that it continued to thrive under my guidance. The world had better be ready for the new era of Reina Enterprises led by none other than Amy Rayna.